Kiva. Répète. Père M Tiva. Répète. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the film Fantastic Planet, a French animated film from 1973 taking place in a faraway planet where humans are oppressed by blue giants and they finally seek to rebel against their oppressors. I truly believe this is the best animated film most of you have never seen or even heard of at that and it has the ratings to back up that claim. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Rabbit Hole Entrance and without further ado, let's tumble down into the world of Fantastic Planet. So this story revolves around a human boy named Ter, whose mother was sadly killed due to the children giants playing recklessly with her. But he's taken in by one of them in order to be their prized possession. Now just to let you know, if you think that this film has any sort of similarity to Attack on Titan, where giant bread and hungry giants are eating poor little humans left and right, then you're mistaken. Because these giants are actually extremely intelligent and are in very advanced species, a very advanced society. They see humans more as rodents or simple little house pits for their amusements instead. In this world, humans are referred to as ohms, and the giants are called drags. Now Ted spends his life being a simple object of amusement for his master, but what makes his story unique is that his owner is actually the daughter of the drag's leader in that planet. So he's able to see how the elites act and manages to also learn all of their knowledge, which will prove to be pivotal later in the film. Hare's obsession is learning, which he gets through a special type of headband that engraves all information into your brain forever. However, in due time, Hare does manage to escape his home, steal the headband and search for freedom. And in his journey, he actually ends up meeting a wild ohm who leads him to her society, where the plot to overthrow the drugs begins. Okay, before I go any further on the story, let's go over why this film is so great. First of all, I have to give a handout to the cutout style animation. I know most people aren't really used to this because it's been primarily used in Europe much much more earlier in time, but it just looks so much more intriguing to me, especially the exaggerated faces that they do. Makes the emotions so much stronger. The music in the movie is very strange yet catchy. It does a great job in setting the tone for the scenes while still remaining unique. The film has a lot of weird scenes as well that will leave you full of curiosity, but trust me, they're still very enjoyable to watch. Here are two examples of the music and the weirdness. Pretty crazy, right? Try watching these scenes while not sober. It definitely took me on a trip. I'm completely fascinated by the drugs. Well, yes, they being the antagonist of the film, they are still a very interesting race. They don't really seem to have any emotions at all. It all seems to be pure logic and rationality. It's a similar vibe to the movie Equilibrium, where in that film it was illegal to have emotions. But in this one, it seems more like they've just outgrown it. And all they really do care about is simply doing their due diligence to society. However, the best thing about them is their meditation. Watching them drift into space is so cool to watch. And what I like even more about them is that they do value imagination a lot. To them, it's a sign of intelligence. And they do like to drift off and let their imaginations run wild. It's pretty nice that they see daydreaming as a productive task. Yeah. Must be really nice to live in a society where they encourage imagination. Unlike here in our world, where if you like to daydream, you're by default a worthless and lazy waste of space in society, and you should finally get a job and move out. Or, or, or am I the only one that had to talk to you like that for my parents? Getting back to the story, 
When Terra enters the Wild Ohm Society, they are a bit skeptical of him since he used to be domesticated by the enemy. With the knowledge that he has and a headband in his disposal, they find great use of him to teach all of the Ohms so that the species can progress and finally rise against the Drax. This does take years and years of learning, but they're all extremely determined to get there, and it gives you lots of glimpses of hope within the movie. However, in other portions of the film, you will also see the cruelty of nature. Humans here are at the bottom of the predator list. In this planet, when they die, they die in masses. They can be gut rich and seeing so many go quite quickly. And I mean, they just have to get back up and try again. Rebuild your society. Maybe tomorrow will be better. It makes me pretty grateful that we don't have to deal with that anymore in this world. The ohms are just as special and interesting as the drogs. Learning how their society functioned was definitely cool to see ranging from the hierarchies of their race, how their nights of fertility perform like this special type of ritual. But the coolest thing of all was the fact that they actually had combats with killer animals attached to them. Yes, it's an actual law there. They would do it in order to resolve conflict. Don't believe me? See for it yourself. Jesus Christ, do you imagine if that's how Pokemon was, where Ash literally would get Pikachu to strap on him while it electrocuted the other dude to death just in order to settle some beef? Huh, how did I think about it? I'd definitely watch that. Now, throughout the years that were passing, it seemed like everything was going extremely well for the Yomes. However, the Drags were actually planning on exterminating the entire planet of them only to keep a very few amount of them as pets, domesticated and kept under control. The following scene is absolutely horrifying. Nearly everyone gets wiped out here. It almost seems like it was the holocaust all happening in one single scene. It goes on for a good amount of 5 minutes. Some of the longest 5 minutes I've ever felt when watching movies. But when this scene all unravels, it is a full on war between the ohms and the drugs. Terra and the rest of the ohms find a new home and reach a level of intelligence where they can actually use the Drogs' own technology against them. Pretty much at this point, the average Ohm is actually more tech savvy than the average human being here. And when chance came, there was a huge shift in the war. When the Ohms discover that when the Drogs meditate, they actually go to a different planet so that they can be able to breed in order to maintain survival. Since the Drogs no longer know emotion, that external planet is the only place that they can come together, connect to one another, in order to reproduce. The Ohms once upon discovering this immediately launch an attack, destroying the planet and all connections that the Drax have to it, putting the Drax species at tremendous risk. The Drax immediately know that they are pretty much lost this war, and they succumb to the Ohms, and decide that they are willing to put an end to the war, work together to form peace. And I think it's better for you just to watch the final scene instead of me just trying to explain it to you. Enjoy it. Époque des maîtres d'Igam, la civilisation Dra connaît une remarquable évolution. Le peuple des hommes, longtemps formé par notre philosophie et nos techniques, apporte dorénavant au peuple Dra le dynamisme et la vitalité d'une pensée en plein essor. Notre planète possède maintenant deux satellites, un naturel et un artificiel. Le satellite naturel, la planète sauvage, est réservé à la méditation des dragues. Le satellite artificiel a été créé par les hommes qui l'ont nommé Terre. Les hommes habitent dans d'immenses cités qui sont réparties en différents endroits. If anyone is curious, Terre is actually the French word for Earth. You see what they did there? This is a great ending to a movie in my opinion. I always like to see two sides coming together and recognizing that they're better off building together than just fighting each other in order to have more. I absolutely love this film so so much. The story is so great, the animation is simply superb, and it's unique in so many ways. I cannot recommend this film enough to you guys. Give the whole thing a watch and prepare to be blown away. Anyways guys, that's the end of this video. Hope you all enjoyed the review of this movie. 
I'd love to hear your guys' opinion in the comments section. I really do hope you guys give this a chance. If you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button, it really helped the channel out a lot. That's all I asked for. So once again, thank you very much. Take it easy, take care, and I'll see you guys next time.